بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله الحمد الحمد ونشكر شكرا شكرا ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل ومن يذلل فلا هادي وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربي زدنا علما ورزقنا فهما سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم وفقني بعلم وعمل بما تريد وترضى اللهم ارزقني اخلاص في القول والعمل اكرم الله سبحانه وتعالى دائما لي سشف بيمين صلى الله عليه وسلم على سيس في قبيل الامين I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for every second and minutes where we are investing in to listen to this session, may it be amongst a means for us to draw ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant me the ability to present and I also pray to Him that may He grant you the ability to understand. Whatever goodness solely lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever evil I would like to ascribe to myself and that shaitan. Alhamdulillah, praise and thank to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us this opportunity to gather in uh, the next episode, in the next session of uh, understanding better of our Muslim Ummah. Now in the previous session, I had the opportunity to share with you two, uh, two renowned hadiths of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related to attending the congregational prayer in the morning and in the evening. Now, what are the virtues, particularly for a man who attends the Jama'ah prayer in the morning and in the evening? The two beautiful hadiths, one narrated by Uthman ibn Affan and the next was narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The virtues were, in the first hadith was narrated uh, through Uthman ibn Affan where he said that he heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, whoever prays Isha in Jama'ah, it it is as if he has stayed up half the night in the prayer. And whoever prayed uh, the Fajr prayer in congregation, it is, it is as though he has prayed the entire night. So if a person is unable to make it for every single prayer, or if a person is unable to attend every single prayer in the mosque, this is an alternative which then gives the opportunity that if the person attends this two prayer, <coughs> one is at the end of your day, means you know that our, our day ends in uh, somewhere between Maghrib and Isha, you are already quite free, and your day starts as early as after Fajr. So if a person is able to present himself in the early part of the day and the later part of the night, then it's as if you have completed that he have come here have attended the entire prayer but that doesn't mean that you neglect it. you neglect your zohor your asar and market that means you pray those three prayer individually either at your workstation or at home however try your utmost best to pray that two uh, prayer which is isha and fajr in the mosque and what are the what are what are some of the further benefits we are able to receive by a person when he attends for Isha and Fajr Jam'ah prayer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start to reduce his nifaq from himself or herself. What is nifaq? Nifaq is hypocrisy. You and I equally, we all have hypocrisy. There are different degrees of hypocrisy in another hadith. So here, the way to, to reduce this nifab, this hypocrisy within oneself is by us continuously, as much as possible, trying our utmost best to attend to Fajr and Isha prayer daily in the mosque. So this is a solution to reduce the hypocrisy within oneself. So this uh, amongst the means to better shape the Muslim 
community when a Muslim is uh, is shaped better when the Muslim is it, it, when a Muslim have an upright character, then you will find that the society will be an upright. And the means to have an upright Muslim is to continuously exercise in through the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad <coughs> Here we are in the first blissful and blessful days of Azul Hijjah. A time and an opportunity bestowed upon us to draw ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through different nawafil, supregatory actions, through different voluntary actions. And in light with this first 10 days of Zul Hijjah, I would like to share certain uh, nawafil, voluntary uh, deeds, voluntary prayer, which would not only be beneficial in the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah, it can be beneficial throughout the year as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the energy and ability and the strength and the means for you to fulfill this voluntary action. As a Muslim, right, as a devotee, the devout Muslim who is keen to succeed in the hereafter will not hesitate to perform as many nawafi, as many voluntary deeds as he can, night and day. Because performing many nawafil, voluntary deeds, brings the servant closer to his wrong. <coughs> it includes him amongst those who receive his divine help, as he referred to in the Hadith Qudsi. When Allah states, Ya Abdi, my slave, my slave continues to draw near to me with voluntary works so that I will love him. When I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hands with which he strikes, his foot with which he walks. Were he to ask something of me, I would surely give to him. And were he to ask me for refuge, I would surely grant him it. This is the beauty of a dedicated devotee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is continuously striving his or her utmost best by dedicating voluntary deeds, voluntary action in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the amount of reward, the amount of returns given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by any other any other creation. No, no creation would be able to re, uh, will be able to give back as how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives back. The give back of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond the imagination of any human being. And hereby, what more? When we do OT for a company, we are looking for bonuses. Everyone wants to do OT. Why? Because at the end of the year, at the end of the month, you're able to get bonus. At the end of the year, you're able to get uh, better benefits. So you do OT. You do some voluntary projects so that you're able to impress your company, your bosses, your managers, <coughs> your bosses and your managers so that you're able to get, you know, a, you know, you're able to get to a better position. Now, what more about the maker who has made you and made me and he himself <coughs> is uh, in, inspiring us through Hadith Qudusi that as a Muslim servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, draws close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through voluntary deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes his. He loves him. So as such, when he hears, he only hears things which is which will delight, which will give pleasure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what he sees is only things which are permitted. And basically, the fact that he has exercised his limbs for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with the individual regardless of 
whatever resistance comes this individual with. That is the beauty about the action. That is the beauty about the voluntary action when a person dedicates for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of Allah's love for his slave, the person will be loved by the inhabitants of the heaven and earth. Here we are in Zul Hijjah, the first, you know, just a few days away for <coughs> Arafah and Eid al Adha. Try as much as possible to do voluntary acts. Acts of uh, voluntary. It can be Sadaqah, it can be, uh, it can be Nawafil, Qiyamul Layl, right? The deeds where we practice during the month and especially on the last 10 nights of Ramadan, we are able to apply it in this first 10 days of Zul Hijjah. And when we are doing it out of our own free will, our own free will, we are coming out of our comfort zone only because we want to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not anyone's pleasure. And as such, what will be our returns is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. in kuntum Allah, do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then follow the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who states in a hadith, which was narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves one of his servants, he calls Jibra'il. Who is Jibra'il? The chieftain of all the angels. But he is the leader of all the angels. From the time of Nabi Adam alayhi salatu salam until the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who was the messenger, who was continuously transmitting the message to the appointed prophets and messengers during their era, during the time, is that Malika Jibra'il. And that is the same Malika Jibra'il who descends upon us during one of the last 10 odd nights of Ramadan. And here by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, would call Malika Jibra'il and say, may peace be upon him. <coughs> he calls Malika Jibra'il, let, let me continue the hadith, so that you know, I would not uh, give, I, I do not want to give a different meaning when I say, may the peace be upon him. Now he's referring to Malika Jibra'il, right? Salamu alayhim. And tells him, and tells him, means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs Malika Jibra'il, I love so and so, so love him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specially invites Malika Jibra'il, informs Malika Jibra'il by instructing Malika Jibra'il to love this individual because Allah loves him. How beautiful is this, people? The beauty of dedicating and devoting a voluntary action is being given a very high status, not only high status, not about high status, but is being given a special spot in the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah invites the leader of Malik, the leader of all the angels, Malik Jibrail, informs him that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala personally of the individual. I love so and so. So love him. Then Malik Jibrail will love him and will proclaim to the inhabitants of the heaven. Allah loves so and so. So loves him. So love him. So the inhabitant of the heaven will love him too and he will be well accepted by the inhabitants of the earth. <coughs> if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates one of his servants, he calls Malika Jibrail and tells him, I hate so and so, so hate him. Na'udhu billah magali. Nas'alullah salam al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard you and safeguard us from, from earning or gaining the hatred of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None amongst us want to earn the hatred of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not want Allah to hate us. If every other individual here you, you have, when you are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're journeying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will encounter different individuals who might not like the way you present yourself, but bear in mind that you are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
So as such, you are being placed to try. If that person dislike you, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. But now, what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates you? Even if the entire world is going to love you, you might have 340 millions of followers in IG. However, if that creator who created you starts to hate you, then where are you and me? Where are we going to place, put our, put our face? Where are we going to put our face? Where are we going to turn our face? Who's going to assist us? Who's going to help us? <coughs> no one can assist and help us. So if Allah hates one of his servants, he calls his, uh, his, he again invites Malika Jibrahim and tells him, I hate so and so. So hate him. Then Jibrahim will hate him and will proclaim to the inhabitants of the heaven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates so and so. <coughs> so hate him. Then the inhabitants of the heaven will hit him and he will also be detested by the inhabitants of the earth. So as much as possible, we want to earn the pleasure of our Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ilaha al-awwaleen wa al-akhireen, the Lord of the first and the Lord of the, he is the first and he is the, uh, he is the last. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stay up at night in prayer, standing until his feet was swollen. Imagine, the best of the creation, the best of the human creation, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, standing night long while his feet was swollen. This is where the famous narration of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her takes place. May Allah be pleased with her. Ask him, why are you doing this? Ya Rasulullah, when Allah has forgiven all your sins past, and future. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddara min dhambik wa ma taakhar. Who has forgiven your past and your future sin? Now why do you need to pray? So amongst the meaning of prayer, as we have read before, amongst the meaning of prayer, amongst the merits or virtues of the prayer, it is a means of salvation. It, for, it literally uh, expires our minor sins. So these are means of uh, forgiveness and salvation we are seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are praying. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her asked this question, posed this question to Rasulullah, when your sins are already forgiven, then why are you still praying long? It's not only praying, he, he, he loved, he, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved lengthening his prayer. <coughs> he loved lengthening his prayer. And the thing is, he lengthens his prayer and he does not instruct even his wife to follow him. He prays on his own in the middle of the night. Yes, the, every other prayer and at certain time, when certain uh, certain times where he would instruct his, his, his spouse and his loved ones, but majority of the time, he would do it on his own. And he, he replied, takun abdin shakuro. Should I not be a grateful slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm being. Now, this is the meaning of, of grateful. You want to be a grateful servant? You want to return the thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, what is the model where we should follow? What is the template where a person should follow? When uh, a person should follow in order for them to be a grateful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the template? The template is by following the best of the, the creation, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Allah says in the Quran, قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرُجُ اللَّهُ الْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Indeed, that is the best example for you <coughs> by following, by clinging on to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the true Muslim tries to perform all his prayer perfectly as much as possible, right? At least near to perfection. It is not merely the matter of going through the motions when the heart is empty and the mind is wandering. It's just not like, you know, you, you just say, majority of us, it's a reminder for myself before I remind anyone. That imagine you're so hungry and you say, Allah, but you start to pray. And what is running in your mind? Makan apa ni? Nak makan nasi lemak ke? Nak makan mie rebus? Tapi nak beli kedai mamak ni? Nak makan mie goreng? 
So your mind is running with all these thoughts while your mouth is articulating Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Your, your, you, you can just be so beautiful and melodious in the recitation which you are reciting. However, your mind and your heart is preoccupied with what you want to eat. Are you going to eat that food or this food? The thing is, there isn't this, this conscious of what you are reciting. Why you do? Because my mother and father ask me to do. Why do I do what I do? Majority of us ask this reflect for yourself and I will reflect myself. Why do I pray? Why do I do ruku? Why do I do sujud? You might not know, you might not get the exact accurate answer for certain questions, but at least you travel on a journey to explore, to understand <coughs> why certain things are the way it is. And then you're able to have a better connection. You and I need to bear in mind that when we stand in the prayer, bear in mind that we are not facing a wall. Neither are we facing a window. Neither are we facing a whiteboard. Neither are we facing anything. Not even the black box. Not even kapga. You and I are in the position of interacting with my maker and your maker. So as much as possible, how would the individual Will the individual feel upset if your mouth is talking and you're not concentrating? The concentration is not there. You just that your mouth is just moving, right? You just say without you thinking. So we do not want to offend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must have the khushu, right? We must have the humility in the prayer, finding tune to it, just not by attending, you know, some let's pray and that's it. And then, okay, done. I've, I've already completed. No. It's, some, it's a journey where you do over and over again. Look at you and me. You know We need to exercise every, every single day. But at least keep up to twice a week or thrice a week. <coughs> what more about the nourishment of spirituality, which is, which is the key for the admission into paradise. Right? The spirituality, the soul which is in, in us. We need to feed this soul frequently. So as much as possible, we need to feed the soul with the right nourishment. And when an individual is able to feed with the right nourishment, then you're able to experience the delightness within yourself. You're able to taste that, uh, that sweetness of Iman where you experience. It's your own experience. So as such, when he has completed his prayer. The Muslim <coughs> does not rush straight back into the, the, the hustle and bustle of the daily life. Instead, he seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> he seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Phrases and glorify him in the manner prescribed in the sunnah. Then he turns to Almighty in humble supplication, asking him to guide him and to grant him the goodness of this world and the next. This prayer plays its role in the purification of the heart and the soul. For this reason, Prophet used to say, the source of my deepest satisfaction is prayer. So the source of his deeper satisfaction. There are degrees of satisfaction. Some people are satisfied when you purchase for them iPhone. Some people are satisfied when you <coughs> give them a trip in a very posh restaurant. Some people are satisfied. You know, there are different levels of satisfaction. But the means of the source of satisfaction for our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he find his deeper satisfaction while he is in the prayer, while he's standing in the prayer, communicating with his Lord, having the interaction, chewing each and every single letters of the Quran, literally munching it through so that he can 
experienced the juice of it in his heart. And that was his energizer and booster which immune him throughout the day until the night falls. And this was amongst the means for the upliftment of this woman. And when we are able to, you and me, equally able to practice this in our lifetime, then it will be great. And those who pray sincerely and humbly are under the care and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they do, they do not fear when evil approaches, neither do they become mis misery when something good befalls them. And Allah said, truly, man was created very impatient, fretful when evil touched him, and niggardly when good reaches him. Not so those devoted illan musallim, except those who are if those who dedicate and devote themselves in the prayer. Kind of inside, you know, man is very impatient, and did not we do not know how to control our emotions, including myself. But when we are able to give the new rights to the prayer, we are able to experience a better. Connectivity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we are better connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be a better role model in this world and build a better Muslim community and set good examples as how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said and create successful nations after us. Hopefully, what I've shared with you today is beneficial for me and beneficial for you. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds and my deeds in this first 10 days of Zul Hijjah and for those who are performing Hajj, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dear Hajj and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to visit his house and to be in his land of Arafah on one of the day of Arafah in the future wherever goodness lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيَوْ إِبَلْ حُولَ تَسْخَلْتُ مَسْخَوْتُ مِنْ شَيْطَانِ أَقُولُ لَكَمْ لِحَذَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَبِحَمْدِكَ أَشْتُوا وَلَا إِلَا 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 تَسْتَوْرُ الْقَوْتُوبُ إِلَيْكُ سُمِنَا وَحْمَنَ الْوَرْحِينَ وَالْأَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنْسَانِ وَفِي خُوصَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمِنْ الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتُوَصَلِ